Hi, I'm Bobby Balicki from the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, better known as NEMA. Thanks to the U.S. Department of Energy, we are proud to present Bids for Grids, new media for the energy workforce. In partnership with George Mason University, Northern Virginia Community College, and NEMA members, we've developed a series of short educational videos introducing electrical equipment that's used in the smart grid, the electrical grid for the 21st century. This series is going to present a dozen of the most important products that are critical to a smart grid success. Our mission is simple, to make you more aware of smart grid technologies and help you consider a career in power engineering. This edition of Bids for Grids takes us to Carrollton, Georgia, where we will visit Southwire, who manufactures conductors, a vital part of the smart grid. And we're back on the ground, here to learn about conductors and how they are incorporated into transmission lines that support the smart grid. Let's go take a look. We're here with Emery Barber, the plant manager in Carrollton, Georgia for Southwire's utility production plant. Emery, how many pounds of wire comes through this facility each year? Uh, well over 100 million pounds. And, and out of all of our facilities, if you looked at the market and looked at where we sell into one out of every three homes in the U.S. is wired with Southwire wire, and uh, we're a major player in the utility industry. Tell us a little bit about the manufacturing process here in this particular facility. Well, here we use uh, our primary conductor is aluminum. We bring in aluminum rod, we draw that uh, down to different wire sizes. We strand or twist that together, and then we bring it through, and we put uh, insulation on it. And then we put that in a variety of different packages. We, we twist that together to be direct buried. Uh, we put some of that in uh, plastic conduit or high density polyethylene conduit. At each step, our belief is you, you need to build quality into the product. And each one of our operators at each step, as I said, drawing, stranding, uh, insulating, and, and finishing, each one of those steps has a certain quality criteria that they need to check in line. Conductor consists of three parts mainly, copper wire itself, the insulator, and the outside jacket. The copper itself or aluminum is used to transmit the electricity. The insulator is used to minimize loss through the distribution network. You don't want to lose electricity as you're moving it throughout the system. Typically these types of conductors are found in two places, above ground, the overhead transmission lines, and underground with high voltage underground cable. We're starting to see our utility customers request more underground cable vice overhead because of the flexibility and reliability that underground cable systems provide. The elements of the below ground conductor consist of the copper wire itself, an insulating layer, an armor layer, and the outer jacket. The insulating layer is used to ensure minimum losses during transmission from the generating site to the end user. When you want to transmit a lot of power, you can either go high voltage or high current or even both. Normal conventional copper conductors can only take so much current, but Southwire has a new product called high temperature superconducting cables, uh, which is uh, cooled by nitrogen, so it remains superconducting even when it's loading with a lot of current. And we can actually load those for five to ten times as much as a conventional cable. Wow. And where are you finding the, the best place to put this type of voltage? Right, this is something we want to use and is already looking at using it in dense urban areas, big cities where the infrastructure won't allow you to, to dig up big streets to put in other cables or even go overhead, then superconducting cables is a very good idea. So now that we know the definition of the conductor and the definition of a cable design, we know that um, cable design is not just for electrical engineers. There's a lot of chemistry behind each layer. So we need to pick an innovative polymer that will give us a very uniform thickness and is void and defect free and also has the ability to withstand electrical, thermal and mechanical stability for the next 30 to 50 years. The conductor is used to carry the current. 
but the conductor will not function by itself without the protection of all the insulating layers. And we can see there are many types of insulating here for the high voltage cable, which will be buried underground for 30 to 50 years. So it is very important for the protection layers to withstand harsh environments. Here at Southwire, we focus, and being a product development engineer, we focus on products that not only meet the customer's current needs, but meet needs sometimes they don't even know they have. Things that cut down on time to install, things that help them install quicker, things that make the conductor last longer. Currently, there's no uh, way of transmitting power wirelessly like you would, you know, a radio frequency signal. So you're always going to have to link that equipment together and the conductor is extremely important in that, in that role. One new feature of the, the modern smart grid is called DTS, Distributed Temperature Sensing. It's a way to um, sit in an office through fiber optics and monitor a line's temperature all the way down the line. You can actually look through one of these DTS machines all the way down the line and see um, spikes in temperature. Conductors are rated for a certain temperature over a time period. You can, you can run them hotter for a short amount of time, but then you can't continue to do that or you will fail the conductor. So you, with this DTS distributed temperature sensing uh, technology, you can look at the conductor, know how long you've run it uh, at that over temperature condition, and you can, again, you can shift load, shift energy so that uh, you won't fail that conductor. And you can extend the life of conductors by doing that. Uh, when you're in high school, especially in high school, uh, you may not have had any other employment opportunities. So, you know, your shining moment for us is how have you done in school? You know, have you, your level of commitment in school is really going to predict your level of commitment on the job. Here in Carrollton, we have forged a very, very strong relationship with the schools in our communities. Now, by developing the relationship with these schools, they know what we're looking for. Uh, they're going to send us only the best of the best. They're going to send us those folks they think could potentially become a full-time Southwire employee. They're sort of pre-screening for us and they're giving us the best of the best. Then from that point they go through a for very, very formal application process, a very, very formal interview process. Uh, we get all kinds of information from them at that point. Uh, we also look for beyond the, the tangible things like uh, you know grade point average and involvement, we look for positive attitude you know, initiative. Is this individual going to be one that you're going to have to supervise constantly? Or is this going to be a person that's going to see a need and respond to it? Today we learned about conductors for use in overhead and underground transmission lines. These products require the talents of mechanical, industrial, electrical, and polymer engineers to ensure a world-class product. From Southwire in Carrollton, Georgia, on behalf of NEMA, I'm Bobby Balicki. Thank you.